Hello and welcome in today's lecture. In today's lecture we are going to configure static routing on JunoS devices. Are you ready? Let's start our today's mission. First, let me introduce our scenario. I put three JunoS routers. The first JunoS router is connected to my system. And the range of the IP address between my computer and JunoS router is 10.0.0.0. Between router 1 and router 2 is 10.0.1.0 and between router 2 and router 3 is 10.0.2.0. I assign the IP addresses and check the connectivity between these routers. And this is the way that you must follow it. Before configuring any types of routing, please check the connectivity between your routers. Before we start, let me emphasize on an important tip. Routers must know about the routes and the networks. Otherwise, they won't route your packets. In our scenario, we have three networks. 10.0.0, 10.0.1, 10.0.2. And if you want to have a complete routing infrastructure, all of your routers must know about these networks. When you configure an IP address on your interfaces, the range of the IP address network become your directly connected network. And for directly connected network, you don't need to configure routing because Junos will do it automatically. If here I run show route, you will see that for the range of 10.0.0/24 and for 10.0.1.0/24 I have routes without any routing configuration. I just configure IP addresses. And Junos identifies them as the directly connected networks and put them in the routing table. So for this router I just need one route for the network of 10.0.2.0. But I want to do this with a default route because I want to show you that how you could write default routes inside Juno's devices. As I mentioned before, default routes are the routes that all of the destinations contains in them and they mean all networks with all subnet masks. To configure routing, we go to edit routing options. And here for static routing, we must mention set a static route and then you mention your destination. And here I want to write a default route. Because router 1 only connects to one router. And for going to each of destinations, he must go to router 2. And there is no any other router connectivity. With the subnet mask of 0, please go to next hop, the IP address of 10.0.1.2. This is the IP address which is directly connected from router 1 to router 2. By default, this next hop must be directly connected because JunoS does not reverse lookup for next hop IP addresses. But you could do this and you could mention the IP address of this router, for example, as the next hop of a route. But you must enable reverse lookup by resolve configuration. In addition to enabling reverse lookup, you must have a path to this next hop which is not directly to you and you could configure it via static routes and dynamic routes. And Juniper documentations advise you to do this with dynamic routing because each time it is not reachable, it will remove from the routing table automatically. For now, I use my really next hop router as my next hop address and press enter. And like many other configuration changes, we must commit our change here. For router 2, if we run show route command, you will see that network 1.0 and 2.0 are directly connected. But here, instead of default route, I want to mention the specific prefix. I mean the network of 10.0.0.0. Like this. We go to edit routing options. And here we use set static route for the network of 10.0.0.0 slash 24 and the next hop will be 10.0.1.1. Look at the scenario again. In router 2, I want to say that router, if you want to go to the network of 10.0.0.0 slash 24, your next hop will be 10.0.1.1 like this and we press enter and commit our changes and in router 3 again since we only have one connection we configure the default route to router 2 for all of the networks so again here in edit routing options i say set 
a static route 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0 your next hop will be 10.0.2.1 which is the IP address of router 2 and we press enter sorry I must mention next hop here next dash hop here and commit my changes to be sure about our routing infrastructure I want to check my routing tables again with show route command to see everything is okay we have default route here here I know about all of the networks two of them are directly and one of them is static and here also I have default route you see I have default route which is static and two directly connected network now it's the time to check my connectivity from my PC to end the router. I do this hop by hop or router by router. First, I check my first router, which is set as my default gateway on my computer. You see, I have connectivity between my PC and my first router. Next, I will check the next router, which is 10.0.1.2 and I could ping it. And the last router is 10.02.2. And you see, I have the connectivity. In situations that you have this connection inside your networks, it's the way to troubleshoot. You must check your path from the first to the end. And in many references, we advise that first check ourselves with pinging 127. 0001 which is the loopback address of our computer to be sure that our TCP IP on our system is working correct and after that we go hop by hop we could do this with pinging hop by hop or in Windows we could use the trace RT command and with dash D we ignore DNS lookups and then we mention our destination and here you see that this hop by hop going is doing automatically by trace RT command Trace RT, just like the ping, use ICMP messages. And you see the trace is complete and I'm reaching the destination. But if you don't have connectivity at one of these steps, you will see messages like request timeout or other error messages. And this will show you that where you have problem. And you could find the right place that you have go to it and find your problems. The ping and the trace RT also available in JunoS. The ping is just like the ping in Windows, but the trace RT replaces trace route, which is the same command in Unix operating systems. I could ping 10.0.2.2 in router 1. If you run the ping command in JunoS without parameters, it will continuously ping the destination. And if you want to stop it, you could use Ctrl C, but you could specify the number of ICMP packets with count option. Count, for example, five. I just want to send five ICMP echo requests and receive the replies. You see, after five messages, the prompt stops. Also, you could use the Cisco format for pinging. This is the operating systems format. But if you are Cisco Grow, you know that Cisco, instead of this type of pinging, using exclamation marks and this is also available in JunoS and you could use the option rapid and you see these exclamation marks are meaning you have connectivity and if you don't have connectivities these exclamation marks replaces with dots you could do static routing for IP version 6 as well to do so we go to edit routing options again and instead of set static route we use set rib routing information base and we put a name for our routing information base and Juno's documentations advise you to use the same name as the routing table for IP version 6 and it is inet 6.0 and then we say static and then route and for default route we put it like this 0 double colon slash 0 this is the default route for IP version 6 and then next hop and we put the IP address of the next hop for example 2001 1 and this will be our default route for IP version 6 and if your prefixes are specified instead of 0 double colon slash 0 you mentioned your prefix 
As I mentioned before, if you want to mention a router that is not directly connected to your router as the next hub, you must enable reverse lookup inside JunoS and you must configure dynamic or starting routing as well. To enable reverse lookup for next hub in JunoS, you must mention it inside your route. I mean, you should use it like this. Set static route, for example, for your network of 10.0.3.0 24 and here use resolve. In this way, resolution of indirectly connected next hub will be enabled. Assume that we have a router like this and we want to use it as our internet router. And we have two internet connections from two different service provider. And we call one of them primary connection and the other secondary connection. And we want to use primary as it is available. And if the primary fails, we want to use secondary. In other vendor terminology, it is called floating static route. But Juno is call it qualified next hop. To satisfy this requirement, we write the route for primary connection as the static route and with next hop option. And for secondary, we use qualified next hop instead of next hop and we assign manual preference more than five, for example, seven. And in this way, as much as the primary connection is available, the router will use it as its active route. And while primary fails, it goes to the secondary and use it as the route and you will have your internet connection. To configure qualified next hop in edit routing options, we use set a static route and we mention our destination, for example, default route. And instead of next hub here, I use qualified next hub and address my qualified next hub, for example, 10, 0, 1, 2. And here I assign the preference, for example, 7 and commit my changes. And now if I see my configurations, you will see this here, you see? A static route for zeros slash zero next hop is 10021 and qualified next hop is 10012 and its preference is 7. You see that in addition to predefined preference number which is assigned to different types of routes, we could assign our preference number as well. And in this way, if next hop failed, the router will choose the qualified next hop and send the packets out there. Okay, our today's mission is complete and we're ready to wrap it up. I think we have a good practical day. In today's lecture, first we learn how we could configure static route in edit routing options configuration mode. Next, we learn how we could use ping and trace route for troubleshooting. After that, we learn how we could enable reverse lookup with resolve command to have non-directly connected routers as the next hub. And finally, we learn how we could configure qualified next hub or floating static routes. Thank you for watching me. I hope this lecture helps you to improve your knowledge and see you in the next lectures.